for the rest. Now try the best. Evo was fantastic. Even with all the leaks, even with all the spoiling I was doing, it still managed to get trending. Azuzina, Raven, and Tekken 8 managed to get trending at number one. I never before seen this, not for any other characters, not for any other reveals. Trending number one is a monumental achievement and they did it. Also Mortal Kombat and Guilty Gear Strive, they also went trending number one and two. This is just a representation of how powerful, how big, how strong the FGC has gotten. A lot of people were super excited about the 3D era fighters returning. Ed Boon put out a tweet that kind of highlights this. Mortal Kombat really did a good job with their character design. I think Reptile, his lizard form, looks excellent. I know the blood and gore is in everyone's taste, but I really love what they did with Havoc. And I think it's excellent that they're introducing the Chaos Realm in such a magnificent way. It really feels like Tekken 8 with Raven isn't also Mortal Kombat 1 with like Havoc. They're kind of paying homage to the past generation. This is something that's kind of like a distant memory for a lot of people, but they're bringing it back in a major way. Another surprise that wasn't actually a surprise, but it was just as surprising was when Ono walked out on the stage. You know Ono was once in charge of Street Fighter. Street Fighter wouldn't be what it is today without him. We wouldn't have characters like Jury. We wouldn't have the successful Street Fighter 4 that revitalized the FGC and put us on this path today. After Street Fighter 5 didn't perform as well, they got new leadership and he left the company. I love here that the Tekken developers don't turn their back on a friend. This person at Harada, they have so many like funny skits and pictures together. And this one at Evo is just another one for the history books. They brought Ono out on the stage. And even though I was a little bit confused, like at first with what they were saying, but he actually takes the mic from Michael Murray and says, we have homework. What about Tekken Cross Street Fighter? When I realized that's what they were saying, I was like, wow. Because you know, a lot of people want this game to return a lot of people look forward to this every single day i don't think this will happen and especially after realizing that their kind of agreement was with ono tekken 8 is on its trajectory it has its own like destiny and then so does street fighter so there isn't really a time right now for these games to do this collaborative spin-off but maybe in the future Maybe if both of these games break records and keep growing the way that they are, maybe there will be space for a spinoff and they will decide to do Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Moving on to Tekken 8 now, focusing more closely on the reveal, the reveal that I ruined, spoiled for so many people. You know I apologize for that on Twitter. Once I seen Twitch chat spamming unofficial character names, leaked character names, I realized like how viral my tweets really went. There were so many different content creators who reached out on Twitter and the impact was huge. This character has an MMA fighting background, but they're also trying to pay very close attention to the Peruvian culture, the history there, and they're not trying to lose that with this character. I will go more in detail about this character and also Raven. There's a PlayStation blog that shares some more details, so I'll make a separate video for that. But moving on to the stage that comes with her. I don't think they said the name of the stage, but we know it's centered around the ruins in Peru. There's so many different like lists of names and parts and sections of the regions. This is something that I'm also gonna dive into because I just wanna learn the history, the lore behind these things. This stage is kind of exactly what I wanted out of Tekken 8. If you guys watch the live streams, I over and over and over again say how I would love for Tekken 8 to give us like a tourist attraction. We got Times Square, now we got Ancient Ruins. In the trailer itself, a detail that was spotted by Piffy on Twitter. Lily bounces off the wall and goes over the character's head and lands on the other side. I don't know if this is replacing the other explosion we've seen where the character stays at the wall or if this is something that that they're changing because of let's say feedback or maybe how it was used in the beta i don't know maybe it's a replacement because i could see two of them being kind of confusing for players and they kind of want to make things more simplified more easy to understand and also this will allow people to get off the wall and go back towards the middle of the ring after azuzina was revealed someone went in and they saw that her parry animation is still in the game files they applied it to lily you can see her doing the little bop and stance it's just crazy how like yeah there's 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 stuff in there the last three things that i want to talk about is massive you have stage details that's just blowing the lid on every like fan theory 
out there. Time travel, and then you have callback stages, and then we're also gonna talk about the release date. Someone noticed that the tattoo that's on Jin Kazama's arm is also on this weird like person statue back there. It's so basically this is like representing Jin Kazama. And then another person confirmed what I assumed already. This is like Jin Kazama's soul or something back there. He's just he's just back there just chilling. There's another picture from a past Tekken game or something that also shows the same thing. If you guys know the source of this picture, let me know because I want to do more research into this. But also you have Jun Kazama. She's back there wandering around. Just taking these simple pieces of evidence, I would assume that Jin is either dead or he's trapped or he's being chained down by the devil gene or something. And Jun Kazama entered in whatever void. Some people think it's the underworld and she's trying to free him. She's trying to help him. So that's why she's wandering around and that's kind of why he looks like he's just sitting there. The next detail that a lot of people notice is that the stage here where the walls is destroyed, they're floating in like the ether. This is Jin's stage from I believe Tekken 6. You can see the same throne where he's sitting there, the same chandeliers. This got a lot of people wondering what is happening. Some people think time travel. Some people think this is like an alternate dimension. It's really too hard to tell because we've never really seen anything like this canonically in the game. Usually when we see these like made up stages, it has nothing to do with the story. But this one and the other one and the other one being like so related to the story, you have to like wonder what's happening. Some people are jumping to time travel and I am hesitant to celebrate because I've seen so many time travel stories done over the years and all of them ended in ruin. I mean, look at Mortal Kombat. They time travel, reset the story three times and now they're back at the beginning. If you look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as soon as they started touching time travel, it all fell apart. I'm not saying that the developers can't do it, but I'm just saying based off past people who tried it, it doesn't really go so well. But eventually I'll get around to doing story details about each one of these stages and digging a little bit deeper. So let's move on for now and talk about the release date. The release date. My predictions is March 2024. I'm kind of getting more and more certain in saying that. We have here the Tekken World Tour Finals is January the 12th. Then you have Evo Japan, which returns April 27th to the 29th. Now when a lot of people seen this, they were like, wait, April, that's kind of late, right? Markman had to go on Twitter and clarify, this is not a mistake, this is like correct. You know, we're doing it in April. And I think the reason why they're doing it later is because Tekken 8 is gonna release the month before. The Tekken World Tour ends in January, Tekken 8 is gonna come out in February or March, and then the Tekken World Tour can continue in April. I mean, look at this year, 2023. The Tekken World Tour began in EVO Japan. They're gonna to wanna to maintain that format, their structure of the Tekken World Tour starting EVO Japan, and then continuing all the way until the end of the year. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I have a lot of other videos that I need to make, need to edit, and yeah, the videos are gonna be coming fast. So yeah, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Like and subscribe and bye-bye.